हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम मिस्टर एस एस साजनी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग शरद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी पॉलिटेक्निक एंड आई एम टीचिंग द सब्जेक्ट थर्मल इंजीनियरिंग सो टुडे इट्स आवर थर्ड लेक्चर ऑन दिस टॉपिक आइडियल गैसेस एंड आइडियल गैस प्रोसेस इन द सेकेंड लेक्चर ये स्टडीड रिगार्डिंग चार्ल्स लॉ एज वेल एज गेरो सेक्स लॉ अलॉन्ग विद सेवरल एग्जाम्पल्स and uh, today we will see the last part of this gas law that is uh, avogadro's law so before starting with this uh, new law we will just take a fast review of our previous lecture that is regarding charles law and gay lussac law so in case of charles law we have seen uh, the statement that uh, it states that uh, the volume of a given mass of perfect gas varies directly as the absolute temperature when uh, pressure is kept constant so in case of charles law uh, we have seen the mathematical equation that is v is directly proportional to t when uh, the pressure is constant we have also uh, studied this charles law with the help of the animation uh, you can see here yeah, on the right hand side so in this animation we have seen that uh, the the gas which is represented by the yellow color uh, we are uh, varying the amount of uh, heat Uh, that is with the help of burner which is present uh, just below this gas so with the varying temperature we can observe that the volume of gas is changing uh, that that is with the addition of heat uh, the volume of gas increases and uh, with the decrease in temperature the volume of gas is reducing so we have studied this as a uh, charles law in the next law that is uh, in case of gay lussac's law we have seen the statement that is uh, the pressure of a given mass of gas it varies directly with the absolute temperature of the gas so in this case uh, the volume is kept constant again uh, mathematically we have seen the equation that is uh, pressure is directly proportional to t we have also studied the gay lussac's law with the help of diagram which is uh, represented on uh, right hand side so in this diagram we have seen that uh, the container is having fixed mass so we are now not having a piston like arrangement as we have seen in case of boyle's law or charles law so due to this uh, fixed container the volume uh, in this case is kept constant and uh, the varying parameter here is temperature so as we are uh, changing the temperature the volume will get expand and since uh, there is a, um, the container is having fixed volume there will be no any space for uh, the expansion of gas as a result of this the pressure of the system will go on increasing with the addition of heat and uh, this increase in pressure is observed on the dial gauge in the similar way if we are uh, providing or if we are removing this heat uh, as in the diagram we have used ice for uh, removing the heat from the system so with the decrease in uh, heat the pressure of the system goes on decreasing so this again change in pressure we can observe it on the dial gauge so this was all about uh, gay lussac's law now in the next slide we will uh, start with avogadro's law avogadro's law so the this is the last law from the concept of gas law uh, avogadro's law is an uh, experimental gas law relating uh, the volume of a given gas to the amount of substance of the gas present uh, this law is a specific case of ideal gas law uh, this law is named after uh, the scientist uh, called as amedeo avogadro who stated in the year 1812 that uh, the two given samples of an ideal gas of uh, the same volume and at uh, same temperature and pressure will contain uh, the same number of molecules so let's see the statement once again and uh, understand this law with the help of diagram so the statement for avogadro's law is as follows it uh, states that equal volume of gases at the same temperature and pressure will contain equal number of molecules so now we will understand this with the help of diagram so we are having uh, one diagram here below so in this diagram we can see that uh, there are two containers the first container is having uh, 100 ml of uh, hydrogen gas which is at temperature 25 degree celsius whereas in the other container we are having the same volume that is 100 ml of oxygen gas 
and uh, it is maintained at temperature 25 degrees celsius so by observing both these gases or a container we can uh, say that uh, the volume as well as the pressure and temperature for both these containers are maintained so if such condition exist then as per the Savagetro's law we can say that uh, both the cylinders will be containing same number of molecules though the gases in both the containers are different so this is nothing but we call it as Avogadro's law it simply means that if we take several number of sample of gases and if all these gases are maintained at same pressure and temperature and if all these gases are carrying equal volume then we can say that there will be same number of molecules I hope that you have now understood uh, what is the statement of Avogadro's law still uh, we are having one more diagram here so that uh, you can understand the statement again in the second diagram we can see uh, three different colored balloons so in the first balloon that is uh, represented by blue color it is having helium gas the other uh, red color balloon is having oxygen gas and the green color balloon is having nitrogen gas so just by observing uh, all the three balloons we can see that uh, the size of all the balloons is same which means that uh, all the three balloons are having same volume now if we are maintaining the pressure uh, which is that shown in this diagram that is the pressure for all the three balloons is one atmosphere as well as the temperature is also same that is 273 kelvin so uh, if we are maintaining this pressure and temperature then uh, as per the Avogadro's law we can say that uh, e even if uh, there are three different gases in th these three balloons uh, still we can say that all the balloons will be containing same number of these gas molecules so from all these diagrams uh, we should note one more important point that we are always saying that uh, we are maintaining the same volume so if we are changing this volume then uh, with the change in volume there will be also change in the number of molecules and uh, when we are expressing this uh, Avogadro's law mathematically then we are using the relation in between a volume of gas and the number of molecules so we will see this uh, mathematical expression for Avogadro's law in further slide the Avogadro's law can be written as follows that is uh, V is directly proportional to N or we can simply re again uh, rearrange this as uh, v divided by n is equal to k where uh, v is the volume of gas n is the amount of substance of gas which is measured in terms of moles and uh, k is a constant for a given temperature and pressure so this law describes uh, how and uh, under the same condition of uh, temperature and pressure equal volumes of all gases contain uh, the same number of molecules thus for comparing the same substance under two different sets of condition the law can be expressed as follows that is the ratio of volume of gas to the amount of substance which is measured in terms of moles thus we can write this mathematically as uh, v1 by n1 is equal to v2 by n2 in the next slide we will also see that uh, how many number of atoms or molecules are there present in one mole of a substance up till now whatever we have studied regarding the Avogadro's law in the previous two slides we can also say that if the amount of gas in a container is increased then the volume is also increased in reverse manner we can also say that if we are decreasing the amount of gas then uh, the number of molecules will be decreasing and at the same time the volume of gas that is present in the container will also decrease now if we speak about how much amount of molecules or atoms are present in one mole of substance then the answer to this question is in this statement that is as per Avogadro's theory the number of atoms or molecules in one mole of a substance is equal to about 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 so now you will be asking that uh, what is this concept of mole then for understanding this uh, concept of mole uh, I would like to ask one question that uh, you might have heard related to the word that is dozen 
So, what is the meaning of dozen? I think that most of you all might be knowing that one dozen is nothing but uh, twelve things. So we are counting twelve things, and that is nothing but equal to one dozen. In a similar way, one mole is uh, the word which is used to measure the amount of substance. So just like a dozen is twelve things, a mole is simply Avogadro's number of things. That is uh, one mole of substance. It is equal to six point zero two three into ten raised to twenty three. It is very important that you should remember this Avogadro's number. Also, uh, we will just speak about the diagram which we are having here now. In the first part of this diagram, we can see that the container is uh, having a very low volume and a certain amount of gas is trapped in this volume. So, since the volume is minimum, the, we can uh, observe that uh, there are minimum number of molecules present inside. On the other hand, if we refer to the other part of this diagram, then we can see that uh, the container is having larger volume as compared to the first one. And uh, as a result of this, due to larger volume, we can observe that there are larger number of molecules too. So this shows that the volume, how the volume and the number of molecules are related with each other. So this was all about uh, Avogadro's law. Now uh, we will see uh, the combined laws. That is uh, all the four laws. If we are combining then uh, we can just remember all these equations for Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law and Avogadro's law by a single formula. So we will see this single formula in the next slide. The combination of all the gas laws, we call it as combined law and it is represented by a single equation which is given here. So uh, the combined law is given as the ratio of PV by TN is equal to K. You have already studied regarding all these terms in uh, several laws which we have been studying la since last lecture. So here P is nothing but pressure, V is nothing but volume, T is the temperature, N is the number of molecules and K is nothing but constant. Also in this slide, I would like to request you to uh, just focus on the colors that have been used in this slide because uh, these colors will help you out to remember regarding the previous laws. So here we can see that first if we consider the product of pressure and volume then we can see one uh, circle or uh, oval shape with blue color and this product of PV is nothing but the Boyle's law. Then again if we consider pressure and temperature then uh, the curve around this pressure and temperature represented by uh, green color it represents that uh, it is nothing but gay lussacs law if we consider the light blue color which is shown by the oval shape that is the ratio of volume to temperature then it is nothing but the charles law and uh, if we consider the ratio of v by n which is uh, indicated by uh, orange color and it represents the Avogadro's law. So in this single equation, you can find that we are representing the all the four laws that we have studied up till now. So this was about the combined laws. We will now start with the new point that is a equation of state. So in uh, thermodynamics, an equation of state is uh, the thermodynamic equation relating uh, the state variables which uh, describe the state of matter under a given set of uh, physical conditions such as pressure, volume and temperature. Uh, these equations of state are uh, useful in describing the properties of gas. So uh, we are having a definition, the mathematical equation which uh, describes the relationship between uh, pressure, volume temperature for a perfect gas is known as equation of state. We are supposed to derive an equation which will describe the relationship between pressure, volume and temperature simultaneously. Up till now when we were studying about the gas laws then for every gas law you can remember that we have taken uh, two variable parameters whereas uh, the third parameter was constant. Like in case of Boyle's law, we, the varying parameters were volume and pressure, whereas the temperature was kept constant. 
in case of uh, charles law uh, the volume and temperature were varying but uh, the pressure was kept constant and uh, in case of gay lussac law we have seen that uh, the volume was kept constant and the varying parameters were pressure and temperature however in uh, case of uh, equation of state we are uh, going to consider that all these three parameters that is pressure volume and temperature is going to change so now let's uh, derive the equation so for this derivation we will consider 1 kg of gas which will uh, be changing its uh, state that is nothing but its characteristic that is uh, pressure volume and temperature so we will be considering that um, this 1 kg of gas is changing its state from uh, initial conditions that is p1 v1 t1 to the final condition that is p2 v2 t2 by two process so these two processes are nothing but uh, the first one is constant pressure process which is uh, represented by line uh, 1 to a and, and uh, the second process is the constant temperature process uh, which is represented by this curve that is a to 2 so both these curves uh, or uh, this process are represented on the pressure versus volume diagram so we can see here that is uh, 1 to a that is nothing but the constant pressure process whereas uh, the process a to 2 this curve re is representing uh, the constant temperature process now uh, during constant pressure process uh, we can observe from this diagram that uh, the volume is changing from v1 to va and uh, during constant temperature process the volume is changing from va to v2 thus the characteristics of the gas is uh, changed from uh, state 1 to state 2 by these two process now if we consider our first process that is the constant pressure process represented by line 1 to a then in this process uh, since the pressure is constant we have studied in case of charles law where uh, volume is varying and the pressure is kept constant so we will apply charles law for this process as the pressure is constant here so as according to charles law we know that at a constant pressure uh, the volume is directly proportional to temperature so for these uh, two end conditions that is for point one and the other point a we will apply uh, charles law and thus we can write uh, the ratio of v1 by t1 it will be equal to va by ta so this equation we are obtaining as per the charles law now we will find out the value for uh, VA that is uh, nothing but uh, just by rearranging this equation we can get VA is equal to uh, V1 divided by T1 and this whole term will be multiplied by TA and again in the further part of this equation we are going to replace uh, the value of TA by T2 so the reason for this I will tell you with the help of this PV diagram so if we look at the second process which is starting from point A and ending with point 2 so for this entire process we know that temperature is constant so for this entire process if we consider any point on this curve then we can say that uh, at every point the temperature is constant so if we consider either TA point or uh, T2 both these temperatures will be same and thus we can replace the value of ta by t2 now we have found out the value of uh, volume at point a uh, and the main reason for finding out the volume particularly at point a only is because uh, point a is common to both the process so this will help us uh, for uh, deriving the equation in further part now we will consider the next process which is starting from point a and ending with point 2 so we know that uh, in during this process the temperature is constant and uh, we have already studied that temperature is constant in case of Boyle's law so for this process we will be applying Boyle's law and then according to Boyle's law we know that the product of uh, pressure and volume will be constant thus according to Boyle's law we can write the equation as follows so we will get uh, Va into pa that will be equal to the product of v2 and p2 now again we will arrange the same equation to get the value for va then just by rearranging we will get the value of va as follows therefore va is equal to uh, v2 
and that will be multiplied by the ratio of P2 and PA. Now here again it is important to note that in further part of this equation we are going to replace uh, the value of PA by P1 and again the main reason behind this is that in case of first process that is 1 to A we know that pressure is constant so if we consider any point on this entire line then the pressure will be constant so the value of P1 as well as PA those both will be same and we are thus replacing the value of PA by P1 after this replacement we will again get the value for VA now as we are having uh, two values for VA so we will be equating both these uh, two equations that is we will uh, consider the right hand side of both these equations and thus the equation can be written as V1 by T1 into T2 that will be equal to uh, V2 into P2 by P1 in the next step we will just uh, rearrange this equation and uh, on the left hand side we will take all the parameters that are relating with state 1 and on the right hand side we will take uh, all the parameters which are uh, having the values corresponding to state 2 thus we will be getting the equation as P1 V1 by T1 is equal to P2 V2 by T2 by observing uh, this equation we can understand that uh, a relation between pressure volume and temperature has been derived so if there was one another process which is varying from uh, 2 to 3 then we can understand that uh, in this derived equation we will get further part as uh, this uh, P2 V2 by T2 will be equal to again P3 V3 divided by T3 so in this way if we are increasing the number of process we will be getting the same relation that is uh, the ratio of product of pressure and volume with the temperature so finally we can write uh, the equation as uh, PV by T is equal to constant so this is the final step which we were trying to derive and this uh, equation we call it as the equation of state this derivation is uh, very important from exam point of view because if we see at the recent papers then uh, this question has been asked for a great weightage and also this equation is important while uh, solving the numericals uh, that will be asked from this chapter so just note down this equation and remember because uh, from the next lecture uh, we will be having some numericals and uh, we will be requiring this equation while solving these problems so uh, that's all for today we will conclude now uh, we have completed all the gas laws as well as the equation of state in the next lecture we will be having some uh, theoretical points such as characteristics a gas equation or a characteristic gas constant as well as a universal gas constant which are uh, asked in the exam as well as it can also be asked for numericals so we are also going to solve the numericals based on this chapter in the next lecture so till then thank you very much